35. A necessary step in the manufacture of sulfuric acid is the formation of sulfur trioxide, which is SO3, from sulfur dioxide, which is SO2, and oxygen, which is O2, as shown here in this balanced equation. Now, at high temperatures, the rate of formation of SO3 is higher, but the equilibrium amount, aka the concentration of partial pressure, of SO3 is lower than it would be at lower temps. So letter A, it says, does the equilibrium constant for the reaction increase, decrease, or remain about the same as the temperature increases? Okie dokie. So I'm just going to put letter A over here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the balanced equation. Let's just write it over here. 2SO2 gas plus O2 gas and this comes to, oh, actually, it does not come to equilibrium. Technically, there should have been, you know, a forward and a backward arrow, but whatever. We'll just do it this way. Okie dokie. So, first things first, I just want to say that equilibrium does get changed when you change temps. That's a fact. It does not change when you're talking about concentrations, which we will see because we're talking about Le Chatelier's principle. So just know that equilibrium constants will change as you change temperature. So to remain about the same is incorrect. We either know that this is going to either increase or decrease. We just got to find out which one. So this comes from the K formula. Remember, equilibrium constant is the K value. And remember, we've done tons of problems, right? K is equal to the products divided by the reactants. And remember, you got to raise them to those coefficients, right? So if I just quickly write out the K formula, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about uh, KP or KC, but specifically they talked about pressure. So maybe I'll just say that, you know, we got a KP formula. So this equals the pressure of the product, which is SO3. And that's going to be raised to the second, right? Because I have a two in front of here. And then it's divided by the reactants. They're both gases, so I have to include them. So it's the pressure of SO2. This is also raised to the second. And then times the pressure of the O2. That one you don't have to raise anything because it's just raised to the first. So... We got something like this going on here, right? All right. So now, we want to know what's going on when the temperature increases. Well, we have to figure out what's going on with the SO3, whether it's increasing as the temperature increases, or is it decreasing as the temperature increases? We need to find that information from all this jazz that they told us. Well, they did say over here that at high temps, that means the temperature is increasing, right? At higher temps, you're raising the temperature. So they said that at higher temps, the equilibrium amount of SO3 is lower. So as you're raising the temperature, your partial pressure of SO3 will drop. So take that. If this number is dropping, just like they said, it said that it was lower, I know that this numerator is going to drop. So maybe I'll just erase this and just put a decrease, right? This is dropping. And since this is in the numerator, what's going to happen to the KP? If you drop a numerator value, if you make it lower, the KP is also going to drop. That's a direct relationship. So since the numerator, which is the SO3, that drops, the KP will also drop as well. So it will decrease. Okay. So that's the answer to the first question. Now comes a little bit of Le Chatelier's principle. It says, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? Actually, endothermic or exothermic, but tomato, tomato, right? We first saw this information in the, um, not the thermochemistry chapter, but the enthalpy chapter. If you're on the, the second edition textbook, it's in chapter five. But remember, endothermic means that the energy is being absorbed. 
Exothermic means that the heat energy is being released. I need to find out what's going on in this equation. So here comes Le Chatelier's principle. Now, they did say that, you know, the temperature increased. We know that we're losing SO3. So let's keep with the idea of having that high temp. So here comes the consensus, guys, right? If you increase your temperature, aka high temperatures, right? If you increase the temperature, it's way too hot. Think about on a really, really, really hot day, right? Me, personally, I would much rather be in the AC. It's way too hot. So I need to go away from the heat. That means that you're going to be shifting your equation. So if you're going away from the heat and this is lowering, would I want to go this way or do I go this way? Keep in mind that you're decreasing this. I'm going this way, right? I'm making the reactants and I'm losing my product. So if I'm shifting in the reverse direction and I'm shifting away from the heat, what side did the heat have to be on? Is the heat on this side or is the heat on this side? Yeah, if I'm going this way, I'm not going towards the heat. I'm going away from the heat. So the heat would technically be on the product side. And now we, we answered the question. Any time that you see the heat on a product side, that's releasing heat. And that's exothermic. If you had a heat on the reactant side, that's always endothermic. So in this situation, since the heat is on the product side and we went away from the heat since we increased the temp, it's exothermic reaction. So is the reaction exothermic or endothermic? It is exothermic. And that's it. Hopefully this helped. Uh, thank you so much for viewing the video. I, you know, I really hope this is good quality educational content for you guys and that you guys are learning as that's the, 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 the goal of this channel for my brother and myself. So let's just keep going. All right. Uh, subscribe if you want to help us out. Thank you so much for that. And I'll see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.